Good morning Year 5, today is Friday and we are going to be drafting um, part 1 and 2 of, of our third person narrative. So on Wednesday we planned our narrative, so we planned part 1, 2 and 3. We thought about the main points for each paragraph or each part and what um, smaller points we would tell our reader all about. Then yesterday we looked at some Alan Peet sentences which were some sentence types that will make our writing more engaging and will um, help us to move our story on and to show the emotions our characters are feeling. So to start off with, I just want us to read the waggle again back from Tuesday. So um, if you remember, the waggle was not, um, it was loosely based on The Wizard of Oz, but we had different characters in a different location. So it says, Alice lived in the midst of the Scottish moors with her mama, Frances, and papa, Albert. They lived on a somewhat small farm where no other house could be seen for miles. Her papa was a farmer and worked long hours at ploughing the little land they had, and her mama was a housewife who spent most of her time in the kitchen trying to make adequate meals out of what little pickings they had. Their house was rather small, five walls, a roof, and two rooms. In the smallest room there were two beds and the little metal frame with a thin mattress one belonged to Alice. In the other room there was a fireplace that roared for most of the day, an old cooking stove, a warped cupboard with only one door and a small round table with three wooden chairs that had been fixed many a time. Alice's only friends were the few farm animals that her papa had and her dog Poppy. As Alice stood on the doorstep, all that could be seen in front of her was the silhouetted dark shape of the rising moors rolling on for miles. She knew the landscape so well, every hill, every valley. When the wind was fierce, it rolled through the hills, waking every living creature on its way. Alice could not remember ever seeing the sky turn blue. It always seemed a shade of grey. Alice had always longed for more. She knew more. She knew out there there must be more. What she saw was something she'd never seen before. It looked like black horses were galloping over the fields. The wind howled and the rain rattled against the windows. The wooden house creaked. Alice could see the barn outside swaying from side to side. The shutters began to bang against the walls. Her father and mother were outside running around trying to round up the animals into safety. She knew she should help, but she was too scared to move. In the distance, Alice could see the path of destruction. Trees uprooted, gates knocked down, animals running in fear. Lock down the shutters, her father called as Alice peered out of the small wooden framed kitchen window. She moved towards the door. She needed to help them. She stepped forwards, grabbing the handle as her heart pounded in her chest. But as she pulled, it forced the wind. Sorry, it, as she pulled it, the force of the wind flung the door open hitting her on the head. Alice lay on the stone cold floor asleep. So I just want to show you the breakdown of this um, waggle so you know what you're aiming for when you come to draft. So this first part here that I'm highlighting now is part one. So when you are writing, yours might be similar to that. So you can see that the location that she lives in has been described. And we've learned about her life, who she works with, what she wishes for, and um, who is around her. Okay, so we've learned about the who, what, where, um, and things like that. So we've learned, um, we've we told the reader about some of our W's, if you remember the W questions. Okay, and then here, this next paragraph is part two. Okay, so this is when she is. Um, when they see the cyclone and when they're getting ready for the cyclone. So you might describe what Alice or what Dorothy sees. Sorry, we're not writing about Alice, we're writing about Dorothy. We might describe what Dorothy sees, what she sees her uncle and her auntie doing. Um, remember, Toto jumps under the bed, doesn't he? And that's why she doesn't manage to get in the cyclone shelter. And then this last part here... I would say is part three and four, but obviously yours is going to be a lot longer than this. So today you are literally just focusing on part one 
and part two. So we're thinking about three or four paragraphs explaining your f and um, telling the story of your first two parts. So I'm going to show you how to take your plan and to put it in into a draft, okay? So I'm going to reread my part one plan and the vocabulary and then I'm going to start writing. So my key points were, um, they live in Kansas, Dorothy is an orphan, so she lives with her aunt and uncle. Farm, the life is boring, her house is quite run down, the land is grey and Dorothy longs for more. And then the vocabulary I have is prairie, baked, blades, shades of grey, bleak, stern, dull and dreary. Okay, so I want us to... To write our um, part one, okay? So I'm going to show you part one for my plan and then you will draft your part one and part two. So I want to start off with Dorothy lived in the midst, so that tells me in the middle of the great Kansas prairies, okay? With her uncle, and then I'm going to put a relative clause in there. So I'm using my commas for parentheses. I've got a relative pronoun and I'm going to tell my reader who was a farmer. And if you've got the chapter one in front of you, like I have, you will see that this is in the book. So I magpied how they've structured that, how they've told us who her or what her uncle is. OK, so I've taken that from the book and her aunt M. And again, I'm going to magpie this from the Wizard of Oz book, the farmer's wife. OK, so that's exactly how they have written it in the book. They have told me using relative clauses who they are. So Dorothy, so I'm going to now use one of those sentences that I created yesterday. So I'm going to use the add same add. So that's when I have the same adjective twice in the same sentence. So Dorothy was a lonely girl, comma, lonely because she had nobody to talk to. So I had nobody to talk to, okay? So then I'm going to explain a little bit further why she was lonely and why she had nobody to talk to. Henry worked long, hard days, plowing the baked ground while her aunt cooked and cleaned in their oh, shoe, oh sorry, in their run down house. Okay, then I'm going to use, I'm going to start a new paragraph, so I'm going to just go onto my next page, and I'm going to start with a fronted adverbial, so day after day, so I'm trying to move my story on a little bit, day after day, the young girl, so instead of saying Dorothy, I'm using another um, set of nouns and adjectives to describe her, would play amongst oh, the scorched blades with her small dog. Then I'm going to use parentheses to tell the reader what the dog is called, okay, so which is Toto. She laughed. So again, I'm going to write one of my Alan Pete sentences from yesterday, and this time I'm going to use the inside outside. Um, so I'm going to tell my reader how she looks on the outside, but then tell them in brackets what she's feeling on the inside. So she laughed and played happily with her dog inside however make sure we've got that comma after however 
she longed for more. Then I went to close my brackets and put my full stop. Okay. So, and then once you'd written your first part, you would then continue to write your second part today. Okay. And then once you've done that, I want you to go back to your plan and I want you to highlight or put a star next to or tick whatever you've got available around you to make sure that you have written all of those key points in your writing. OK, so have I told my reader that she lives in Kansas? Yes. So I'm going to put a tick next to it. Have I told them she's an orphan? I've not directly told them she's an orphan, but I've told my reader she lives with her aunt and uncle. I've told them that life is boring and I've told them that the house is run down. OK, and I've told them that she longs for more. So I have done that in my inside outside sentence. However, you can see I've not written about the land being grey. So when I come to edit next week, I know that in my edit, I need to add in more setting description about where she lives. OK, because I described the land as being scorched. However, I didn't say that the land was grey or that the sky was grey or anything like that. So when I come to edit, that's what I need to add in. And I'm also going to think about that for my um, vocabulary as well. So I know I use the word prairie because I use that word for describing where she lives in Kansas. I used blades and I used, that was all I used in this one. So when I come to edit, I might think about up leveling some of my vocabulary to have in this higher level vocabulary, okay? And I've just spotted a mistake in my writing. This long, that should be a comma, not a full stop. OK, so then once you've done that and you've made sure you've got almost every point in there. And if you haven't, don't worry, because we can do that on Monday when we edit. I want you to self assess your writing. OK, so have you used expanded noun phrases? Have you used a modal verb? Is your vocabulary of a high level? Have you possibly used show not tell? Could you have used speech? Don't worry if you haven't used speech, but if you have, that's brilliant. Have you tried to include some year five, six spellings or the year five spelling patterns? Have you used brackets? Have you used dashes? Have you used commas for parenthesis? Have you used fronted adverbials? Is your tense correct? We should be writing in past tense. Is your, have you used question marks possibly? And have you used exclamation marks? OK, so that is your second task. So your first task is to draft part one and two. And your second task is to go back and self assess using the marking codes. If you haven't got a highlighter, you could use um, a colouring um, pencil to draw a line underneath, possibly so that you can show me where you have used the year five skills. If you do need any help, please um, message Mr Bates or I and we will get back to you as soon as we can.